We just got a direct to film printer from Amazon and we're gonna show you how to set it up and what it can do right now. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do it, builder to make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, I got a brand new toy. We got a brand new toy. This is a direct to film printer, DTF printer. Now, it didn't take as much convincing as it did the Glowforge, but way more convincing than it is for the 3D printer. <laughs> I still can't convince her that I need a 3D printer. Yeah, if you guys were on our live on Tuesday, we had a whole conversation about why Garrett does and does not need a 3D printer. I can't, uh, I can't give her a product that the 3D printer needs to make. So if you have any suggestions on how to get me a 3D printer, leave me a comment down below. Yeah, even if you have a 3D printer and you print something cool, yeah. comment. If you don't have a 3D printer, but you wish you had one, because you could print something cool, leave that down below too, because so far all he's got is a comb and maybe some... <laughs> and the cap to the toothbrush, like a travel cap to the toothbrush. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and not That's... worth it. It's not worth it. <laughs> but that's not what we're here for today. Here, today, we're gonna to talk about our DTF printer, and this is our little heater that comes with it. Why did we get a DTF printer? Well, we love sublimation. We've done a lot of sublimation videos. I think sublimation is super cool. Super cool. The problem with sublimation is having the proper materials with that high poly content. It's gotta be polyester, yes. or it's gotta be polyacrylic, yes. or you have to pre-treat it with some kind of poly something. I mean, it looks really cool on the t-shirts, but I sometimes I've had some ideas to do some cool things like with other materials, like jean material and stuff like that that's truly 100% cotton. I can't use the sublimation printer for that, but you can use a DTF printer. I also want to to, and most, the biggest thing that I want to do is to be able to sublimate on wood. Yeah. And we've tried that wanna, a bunch of times. I wanna put some cool images on some MDF yes, and we, make that stuff pop. We've done a couple of videos. You can go back and see some previous videos where we used laminate sheets and we did some sublimation on the laminate sheets. We, we used, used polyacrylic spray. Yes, and we tried to sublimate on that, but none of them gave me the results I was really looking for. Yeah, so I want something with those bright, bright colors. So we did a little research and we found this DTF printer. What is direct-to-film printing? <laughs> so DTF printing is a relatively new technology. It's only been around for about two years. But the great thing about this is it's, it's kind of like direct-to-garment printing, if you've seen that, except now you can print directly to a film. And then that film can be applied to so many different types of materials. It can be applied to t-shirts. It can be applied to wood. It can be applied to metals, lots of different things. So that's very exciting. The DTF film, once it's applied, once the ink has been applied to a shirt, it's got a lot of stretchability and flexibility. It prints the image face down on the film and then it comes back in with some white to give it a background. And then you put some adhesive on the back, melt that stuff, and then it will apply to anything. Including black t-shirts. Because yeah. it has that white backer, it'll go right to dark right colored to a, materials. A black cotton t-shirt, no pre-treatment. Or a hat, I was thinking about hat. doing yeah, some stuff do on your hat. Shoes. <laughs> Ooh, shoes, I yeah. some cool little like, tennis shoes. Yeah, so we've got a lot of great ideas and we're really excited about this. And then through our research, we found that in many cases, the DTF printing is cheaper, faster, more affordable. Easier. Easier. I mean, think of the images that I can do that I wouldn't be able to do in vinyl or something like that, or screen printing. Yeah, screen, pr so it's it's definitely easier than screen printing unless you've got that set up, set and ready to go. So for kind of this mid-level crafter that we are, yeah. this DTF printer, I think is going to kind of revolutionize some of the things that we're doing, uh, especially we do a lot. stuff to a whole other level. That's what he, he's been saying that for a month. We really want to try this on the, the MDF so that we could do some cool things with our door rounds. We want to take them to the next level. So we're really excited and we thought, 
Well, we thought we would show you the whole setup of this process. So we've, we've done a little research. We've watched lots of videos. Most of them are by the manufacturer. <laughs> so there aren't any kind of... Good explanatory videos. Like yeah. how would some normal person get into this? Yeah, if you were a DIYer and you were looking to do something with DTF printing, let us tell you about it, show you how to set up this printer, and let's do a first print. Print and... What press? Print, print and, and press. press. Let's try our first print and press. <laughs> so we found a DTF printer on Amazon that cost about $2,800. It came with the printer. It's a modified Epson L1800 printer. It came with the oven that melts the glue on the back. And it came with the ink. And the transfer sheets. Oh, and it came the with film. 100 transfer sheets. That's right, the film. The only thing we needed to pick up was the DTF transfer adhesive. It's a, just a bag of powder. Setting up the printer was pretty simple. After I uncrated it, I simply put the ink waste container in the back. It was just two screws and then a little plastic cup. Then I had to put some ink tray for drippings underneath the printer, but I couldn't really figure out where it went, so I just put it somewhere under there. If it leaks, I'll move it. I plugged it in, I powered on the back power switch, I let it do its little thing, and then I hit the front power switch, and then I let it do its thing. I guess it's doing all the checks. Then I ran a piece of plain paper through it, just from the copier. And then I ran a sheet of DTF film through it, just to make sure those inner workings are pushing my paper through. Next, I filled all the little ink jugs. That was pretty easy. I think peeling off the little safety top was the hardest part. I spilled the blue everywhere. Once the ink was in, I used some syringes and I just primed each of those little print heads, just getting that ink started. Just pulling it through. I'm only sucking about two or three millimeters of ink into the syringe. The first few I dumped back into the little tiny tubs, but the next uh, I squirt into the trash and I rinse them out. Next, I prime the ink waste. I unscrewed the little cap, stuck the syringe in there, and I just started the, the ink waste. Installing the software is probably the hardest part because my Windows virus protection kept thinking it was a Trojan horse. So I installed the software the first time to create the folder. I went ahead and excluded that folder from my virus protection and I reinstalled it and it seemed to work fine. I then installed the drivers, I connected the printer. To open the software and use the software, I need a little dongle. I needed a little dongle. Say that's five times fast. A dongle. That's what they call it. That was the encryption key or the software key for the RIP software. Now the RIP software, you're not going to be able to build or make any graphics in the RIP software. All that really does is enable you to put white background to it and print color then white. It's kind of like a hack for the Epson printer. And once I got that installed, I loaded it in our graphic and I did a test print. All right, we ready for a test print. Let's see how this thing works. Let's, let's get it going. We're gonna print our logo and try to put our logo on a couple of things. It's pretty cool. It came with a whole bag of film. Yeah, there's like a hundred sheets of film. So you wanna print on the dusty side. There's like a dusty side and a dull side. One side has this like little powder on it. You can kind of scratch it off. That's the print side. You wanna print on that. So we're gonna put it in a printer. In this printer, it's face up. Dusty side up. We've mirrored our image, we've duplicated our image, and you can see that as it prints, it's printing face down. That's why we mirrored the image. And you can see that it lays the color down, and then it comes in with the white print head and prints white over top of it. Kind of gives it that white background. Once it was done printing, we used that DTF powder, that adhesive powder. We rolled it around on the, we rolled it around on the wet ink for a little bit. Make sure it was getting everywhere, getting all those little nooks and crannies. A nice even coat. Then we gave it a gentle shake off and we put it in the oven that came with the whole kit. And that went in there for about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This shows Celsius. And we went for 200 seconds. All printed. I tried printing with two different color settings. This is the graphics and text. This was photo. So the photo looked like it gave it a little better white on the back, but the graphics seemed to turn out a lot better, like a little more crisp. You can see all the little hash marks in the make. We're gonna yeah. trim these up and then we're gonna 
put them on some stuff. So we're gonna start with a black t-shirt. So I'm really excited about trying these black t-shirts. You know, we've done a lot of sublimation videos on how to do black t-shirts. Is this cotton? It is 100% cotton. 100% cotton black t-shirt. All right, so everything else is like your sublimation. You do want to lint roll this shirt. Make sure there is no lint under there. And then we're gonna give it a quick pre-press. The temperature is 325. 320? It's 320. 320. 320 quick press. You don't say it while you're doing it. Hey, what's coming off on the shirt? I don't know. We're gonna find out. Well, you might have to lint roll it again. Yeah. All right, something was on the... Something was on the easy press. I don't know who would have done that. Who's using Who's using the easy press last? Left it a mess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Relint rolled. Still warm. We're gonna start with the one that we use the picture settings for, the photograph. All right, so. I'm really gonna find out where my center is and just eyeball this thing. Yeah, eyeball it. That's how I would do it. All right, does it look crooked? No? No, it looks good. If it's crooked, I'll just stand crooked. We're so excited about this, we're gonna get ourselves a heat press. <laughs> All right, 320 for 15 seconds. It's medium pressure. Medium pressure, so I'm just gonna lean on it. Just gonna give it a quick lean. As opposed to standing on it? Yeah, I won't stand on it. I'll just lean on it. Let me come around this way so you guys can see me. <laughs> oh, is that it? <laughs> Didn't we get a chance to chit chat? No, I think it was just back up to. Oh, did you yeah, do it again? I think that was it. Yeah. I hit it again. Go, go. That's what makes it so quick and fast. Was that it? Yeah. That was it, huh? That's it. Now, this is a cold peel, so we're gonna give this. I was gonna shake the shirt. Just gonna get it off that hot pad. Give it a little shaking. I'll shake it. I won't stir it. <laughs> All right, is that cold enough? No, it's not cold enough. Why don't we start? Why don't we set that right here? All right, we'll to set cool. this over here to cool down now. And cool we'll start the next one. All right, let's try another shirt, but we'll try it with the the other graphic. Now the difference between these, you can really see that this has a nice solid white backer. And that one is much thinner. A little bit translucent, a little bit translucent. So I wanna see how they both work. Yeah. A little trial and error for you. We're gonna tell you what our lessons learned are here. See what we figure out. So second shirt, same as the first. Got my separator sheet, just so uh, the plastic doesn't stick to it, just in case. 320, 15 seconds. With some medium pressure. Medium pressure. Medium pressure. <laughs> I'm on my tiptoes. <laughs> One. That's it, that was get it. out of here. Come on now. <laughs> All right, this is also a cool press. Mm, Ooh, look at you the can see it. Already. It doesn't, doesn't pop like the other one. Mmm. Mm. All right, we'll leave this to cool. Give it a minute to cool. Cool it down. Now, now I have some MDF pieces. This is what we've been waiting for. Yeah, I want to see how it works on the MDF. See how well it lines up. If I can line up something that I cut on the Glowforge with something that I printed on the DTF printer. Let me make room because you're gonna need to set it over here to cool, right? All right, all right. The thing about MDF, when you heat MDF, it will warp. Uh, so we wanna heat this. Are you gonna do it? You're not gonna do it upside down. You gonna have high heat tape on it or something? Yeah, let's high heat tape it. Okay. With MDF, once you press it and heat it, you want to put something heavy on it so as it cools, it cools flat and it doesn't cool warped. Just gonna keep it in place while I flip it. So he lined it up upside down, laid it on the film, and now he's gonna flip the whole thing over after he's taped it. Yeah, that worked well. 
All right. All right, let's do it. We're gonna keep the right. same time. Yep, 320, Heat 15 seconds. Heat and pressure. Now, which one did you use? The one, the photo setting, the one yeah, with the I, more I the solid photo. white backer? I cut two of them now. Oh, okay, we can try both of them. Great, let's do it. Oh, that was it. Such a quick 15 seconds, I love yeah, it. Yeah, that is a quick 15 seconds. Oh, this slate is heavy. Yeah, here, I'll put it back here. Huh? All right, we're gonna let that dry. I mean, cool with the slate on it. Was that the photo one? Yeah, that was the photo one. All right, this one's got some burnt edges. I wonder if we'll be able to see the burnt edges. Good test, good, good test. Good test. Good test, good test. Look at us. There are so many settings so many color settings and percentages. I haven't gotten all that figured out yet. See, all right, let's see, moment of truth. All right, we'll start with this corner. Yeah, that's a pretty easy peel. Wow, the colors are super bright. It looks yeah, good. Yeah, look at that. Interesting, Ooh. interesting. Man, I like how that pops on its shirt. All right, let's do the other one. This feels like those t-shirts I had that I would get at the beach when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm, see, the white needs to be poppier. Yeah, hold them up. Yeah. So this was the graphic and text. This was the graphic and text. You could see how sharp it looks, but the white didn't pop. That's the photo. It's the picture, the photo settings. I like so, that white, that white pops. Yeah, that's perfect, but I can't see the lines. Yeah, you can't see the lines make as much. As much as you can in this one. Well, there's a drop shadow, and I think the drop shadow is messing with the photo. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so can we do photo with, can we do graphics and text and change the white setting to, to what match the, the. Yeah, we can try that. Okay. We're gonna try that. All right, these are cooler. Do you wanna try them? We'll start with the photo one. Here, let this sit, on. oh yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, we're All ready. All right, next is the peel of the MDF. Wow, that came off real easy. Oh, that looks so tight. Oh, Oh. I just smeared it. Oh, it's still soft. Oh, I gave a little it needs to cool. It needs to cool longer. Yeah, it needs to cool a little bit longer. All right, don't rough it up right when it's fresh. So out of the bag. it wasn't cool enough, but it looks great. I yeah, mean, it looks, it looks great. great. Let's do the other one then. There's the MDF on the back. This on the front. All right, again, that's the photo, and this is the graphics and text. I think they both look great. Let me see. But I, Again, I like you the can white. see through it. Yeah, okay. I like the white. The white really pops. All right, what'd you think? Pretty easy, right? Pretty easy, pretty affordable for the kind of results. I mean, I wish you guys could feel that. That feels pretty cool. It said nice and stretchy. Our next, our next I mean, thing is. We'll I really to test like out how this them. photo stuff works on the wood. That's that's the whole purpose for me. That was the big, the number one reason for getting this was to really see what it can do on the wood. And to take and our uh, rounds to a whole other level. You know, those things go like hotcakes now. Wait till they see what we got cooking for them right now. Yeah, I they mean, got some new ideas, and we're excited to try them out. So, are you on the fence about getting a DTF printer? You're gonna get a DTF printer? What do you think you're gonna make with your DTF printer? You're gonna stick to fabrics? Or you're gonna get a little adventurous and put it on other substrates? Some yeah, wood. next week we're gonna try some more materials. So come back and watch us next week where we'll try this on maybe a tumbler. I wanna do a stainless steel tumbler. Yeah, maybe the slate. Ooh, yeah, the slate. On the slate Ooh. and 
<clears throat> some more wood. We really are thinking about trying it on a piece of furniture. Oh yeah, I can't wait to try to do it on a furniture flip or something. Yeah, a big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys, thank you. The list keeps growing and we love talking to you. We get to interact, I share some files, you share some info. I love all the sharing that happens in our little community. And wait, oh. don't forget to join us on Tuesdays for our live where we're usually doing a test cut Tuesday. Yeah, test cut Tuesdays. And painting a new file, testing a new file and painting a new file Living for a edge. new door round. <laughs> Living on the edge. All right, now go. We are about out of time. So if you're not going to join us for the patron after show, we will see you Tuesday and then next Friday where we'll do it, build it and make it again. I'll balance one of these little guys. Oh, hey, it's a lot drier now. Now it's not smeary. Yeah, better, a lot better. Ooh, tiny. Ow. I'm out. <laughs>